immune response is certainly a hot topic right now. Uh, essentially, we are delivering a protein to boys with DMD that their body is not used to seeing. And so whenever that happens, the body can register this as a foreign material and react against it. And so we have seen this in uh, some of the gene therapy uh, clinical trial programs. Um, and, and this has led to a direct T-cell mediated effect on uh, the muscle. In addition, we have seen um, other complications of gene transfer as well that really uh, make us have a healthy respect for the immune system, things like complement activation and the need to uh, be on uh, the ready to be able to intervene and keep these boys safe as we pursue this really revolutionary treatment. There will certainly be implications as we learn more about the uh, systemic response to gene transfer therapy. The T-cell mediated uh, myositis report um, has led to some restriction on the administration of this therapy to boys that have um, certain uh, deletions uh, within certain exons. And uh, the hope is to be able to um, gradually broaden this opportunity uh, to include uh, more boys that have uh, a greater number of deletions, but we have to do so in a very discreet way in order to respect safety. In addition, regarding the complement mediated um, effects that can be seen with gene transfer therapies, uh, we have um, been able to I think a little more critically about the monitoring parameters, um, the labs, um, the clinical features that we need to uh, tune into after we have administered a, um, a gene therapy. We're also able to start thinking now about the differences between each of these platforms and these therapies. Um, in particular, there are differences in the vectors that are being utilized. And so one vector may um, uh, create a different response within the body compared to a different vector. AAV8 may be different than AAV9, may be different than AAV rhesus. And in fact, we know that to be the case. We will have to keep this in mind as we evaluate each of these programs and um, not just their efficacy, but their potential for adverse effect as well. There's a lot of discussion regarding how to best approach the challenge of a boy who may demonstrate an immune response to a gene transfer therapy. Um, there is a discussion regarding how to um, address boys who have pre-existing antibodies. Is there a way to modulate the immune system um, to permit them to receive gene therapy? There is a discussion about modulating the immune response uh, with agents like rituximab in order to prevent um, uh, immune-mediated responses uh, against the newly produced protein. And there are ways of trying to mitigate complement activation as well. And I think we're going to see this evolve over time and become a part of some of these um, clinical trial um, protocols. Uh, right now, we're still learning. We're still learning from having had broad enrollment with no um, exclusion criteria um, with regard to the exons that are included. What you'll notice is that in each of the programs that uses gene therapy, their um, excluded exons are going to be different because it's going to correspond to um, the particular components of the dystrophin gene that are being utilized for their gene transfer therapy. So I'm sure we'll see this evolve over time. When we're thinking about the tolerability of this approach, the immune system is the clear issue um, that we have both the innate immune system working against us in the short term when complement gets activated and we see some very serious early consequences to this. We also have the general viral syndrome malaise that happens to people right after their dosing a lot of the time where we see profuse 
vomiting and um, uh, issues with intake and um, malaise and, and uh, lethargy, other kind of issues that sometimes lead to hospitalization, even if we're doing an outpatient um, research trial. Um, the uh, activation then of the adaptive immune system is usually around four to six weeks after the introduction of the vector in most of the programs so far. And again, very um, various reactions have been seen at that point, inflammation of different tissues. Uh, I alluded to this earlier in our discussion. Um, but the, the basic uh, bottom line that we have as a community is who is at risk for having these issues? Because it's a problem with efficacy if somebody has a very robust response against something that we want to stay in the body, of course. And then there's a problem with safety and tolerability if we have an overreaction to whatever it is, whether it's the viral vector, whether it's the transgene. And these safety events can be very serious um, when they're occurring in our research trial subjects and are going to be happening in the real world when we bring this into the clinic. Can we predict who's going to have these reactions? Are there genotypes in the dystrophin gene that are going to predict this? Um, there's been some great international collaboration across the programs, which is so wonderful to see where people are sharing their experiences across the different industry aspects of how this is being sponsored so that we can best understand as a global community how this is predictable, um, how this is manageable in terms of adjusting immune treatment once the immune system has started to go out of whack. We need to do better in terms of our uh, immune modulatory approach to this so that we know what kind of approaches are effective. Do we need to do something that's more T cell based, more B cell based? Should we be doing plasma exchange? Should we be giving uh, intravenous immune globulin? Should we be increasing the steroid dose? Should we be adding other kind of immunomodulatory me um, medications that are both short and long acting to be able to better um, optimize the outcome with efficacy, increase the durability of what we're doing, and then also make this as safe as possible across the lifespan with both short and long-term potential complications of transgene delivery. Um, and we have lots more to learn as a community about how to do this effectively, but um, the right steps are being taken and being collaborative and um, open and sharing um, so that we can learn as quickly as possible and as scientifically soundly as possible how to do this effectively.